Greetings and salutations to all. I am Stanley from Mostra di Café, Johannesburg, South Africa. The question, what is the right coffee dosage? Or in simpler words, how much coffee I must use? Unfortunately, prompts me to ask you the following question. What is the type of brew you are about to perform? As you can already understand, my friend, different coffee brewing methods call for different amounts and grind levels of coffee. But before we carry on, let's put some basics on the table. A coffee mug takes about 220 milliliters of water and a tablespoon holds about 5.3 grams of ground coffee. So we are going to be talking in liters of water and grams of coffee. Whilst we should also underline here that there is no accepted coffee to water ratio by any authority or science. All we got is the realization through experience that 60 grams of coffee per one liter of water tends to satisfy the vast majority of coffee drinkers worldwide, and this will be the base of my opinion. What I've just said could easily be the straightforward answer to this question, provided all brewing methods were the same. But they are not, and this is why I need to dive deeper into the subject. It is scientifically proven that only about one-third of the ground coffee's mass is soluble to hot water. So if your brewing process is right, you stand a chance to end up taking nearly full advantage of this 30% soluble part of coffee, and the end result will be what it could best be. But if you do not, you will end up compromising the end result, sometimes to a great level. There are two families of coffee brewing methods, with each family maintaining a different relationship between coffee and water. The first family, called percolation, has the water's entire volume going through the body of coffee, usually with some force. And in this family, one will find the poor overbrewing method, your bean-to-cup encapsulated coffee machines, the barista machines, and so on. The second family, called infusion, has the water's entire body coming in direct and prolonged contact with the entire coffee body. And in this brewing family, one will find your plunger or French press, your AeroPress, and so on. If I was to make a cup of coffee using a plunger, I would most probably use about 8 grams of coffee, knowing that the coffee will remain in direct contact with the water for at least 3 minutes. Therefore, the coffee's 30% soluble part will be dissolved in water. My coffee's grind would be coarse, because bigger coffee particles soaked for so long in hot water naturally deliver beautifully and at a slow pace all soluble coffee elements they could deliver, plus their size will not clog the plunger's filter, allowing me to plunge with ease. But if I was to use the exact same coffee on my barista machine, I would go for 10 to 20% more coffee. In other words, I would not use only 8 grams, but rather 9 or 10 grams. I would also make sure I grind the coffee at espresso level and not coarser. And I would do this because I know this to be the only way I could end up getting an extremely close result to the one I got from the plunger. This coffee quantity difference per shot is the only way one can counteract the fact that infusion brewing not only forces the water through the body of coffee, but it does this in a short period of time, hence the need for the coffee to also be in smaller particles so they can get soaked much faster. So, the basic and fundamental principle of coffee brewing says that you will always end up getting more coffee per water drop when you allow your coffee to remain within the body of hot water for a certain period of time and less coffee per water drop if you rush hot water through the body of coffee. Being a coffee roaster for many, many years already, that's all I have for you on this topic, my friends. Keep on enjoying this wonderful beverage nature gave humans and keep on learning more about it. Always remembering that there are many coffees out there, but the best coffee will always be the one you like the most.